Welcome to Be Our Guesty, another uh, virtual meetup. We really miss our actual meetups. We didn't have those since March, but it's such a pleasure to bring together every few weeks really big thought leaders from the industry to help us inform where the industry is going and how to weather the current storm, as we say. Today, we're going to talk about preparing your properties for new travel personas in the new normal, and I'm very excited to have uh, a lot of friends, partners, customers uh, on the line to discuss with us uh, this issue specifically. My name is Omer Rabin. I'm the Managing Director of Americas and the Global Head of Strategy for Gasty. actually coming live today from a short-term rental property in Aruba, a place that just got open two weeks ago to uh, visitors coming from New York. Feel free to join me. A lot of great listings here. I am serious. Um, and I'm very proud to have uh, three other esteemed guests on the line today. Michael Dreger joining us from uh, lovely Canada, who's the CEO of Operto and can share a lot about the big topics of the last few months, things that have to do with cleaning, operational uh, 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 issues around your listings and really give us the best practices on that. Also joining, uh, joining us, Andrea Santos, who's the CEO of Full House who is very much committed to make all your listings very beautiful because your guests care about that. And so is she, she has really good taste. Um, and Roman uh, Pedan, who's the founder and CEO of Casa. A lot of people ask us at times like this, are there any PMCs that are growing through the crisis and are really able to outperform the market? We found Roman to be one of those and I'm very excited to hear what he has to say and what he can share with us um, as the founder and CEO of Casa. So, three great uh, thought leaders that will share with us their view of the market, the personas, and how to cater for those personas right here today. Just a few reminders before we get started. I know that when you're in a Zoom meeting and you wanna say something, you usually just take yourself off mute and talk. This is not the case here. Um, so be sure that you grant all the necessary audio permissions so you can actually hear us, but we cannot hear you. If you have a question, please submit it on the Q&A. We have Abby joining us from Guesty headquarters in Tel Aviv. She's monitoring all the questions and I will moderate uh, a Q&A part at the end of the presentations. We'd love to hear from you and we'd love to have a very open conversation answering all the questions that you might have. We are of course recording this event. It's also shared right now live on LinkedIn and on Facebook and we'll share the recording with you via email. I know a lot of you are uh, looking forward to that at the end of each session. So rest assured, we're gonna do that here as well. Um, feel free to click on the QA box, type a question and just submit it. Just a little bit about what's gonna happen. I'm gonna have very quick introductory remarks, basically sharing some of the data that we are seeing from our partners at Airbnb, VRBO and others, and from tracking all the data that uh, we have from our own customers in 80 different markets, thousands of customers. So just to give you a little bit of updated data about where the industry is at today and what we are seeing. Then we're gonna have the discussions led by Operto, Full House and Casa Living on how they are catering for the new travel personas and what they can suggest uh, to all of us. Then we're gonna have a panel discussion and Q and A. We're gonna do our best to stick to these uh, times and leave enough time for all of you to ask questions that might be relevant for everybody um, on the line. For those of you who don't know who, what Guesty is and who is Guesty, so we are a platform, an end-to-end -end solution that really simplifies the complex operational needs accompanying short-term rental property management. And the idea is we are trying to enable PMCs, property management companies all over the world to focus on what matters, on asset acquisition and on guest experience, while we are streamlining and automating everything else from having a unified inbox to making sure that you have a calendar, a multi-calendar for all the multi-units across all the different platforms, that you have all the data to understand what is happening with occupancy um, and basically manage all the day-to-day -day operation. Reset the codes for the locks, call the cleaner, uh, talk with your guest, everything that you can think of, it's all part of our end-to-end uh, uh, -end solution. And again, if you wanna hear more about Guesty, of course, we'll be very happy uh, to schedule a demo and talk with you if you're not a current customer of ours. Our platform is not just a software solution, it's also a center of an ecosystem. And so we of course have uh, uh, some of the best companies out there in every single aspect of the short-term rental and Full House and Operto that are here today are just part of our big 
marketplace, by definition, we are trying to understand what are the needs of every property manager in the world. Some of them we create ourselves and some of them we find uh, best of class solution that is out there and introduce them into our marketplace. And a lot of those are available to you um, also in pretty good uh, uh, terms, specifically negotiated by Guesty on our marketplace. And so highly recommend for you, even if you're a current customer to go on our marketplace and take a look at our partners and what they offer right now, that can be a great way to actually make your own tech stack much more uh, COVID ready, if you will. Really quickly about COVID, we all know about COVID, so I'm not going to go back into things that we have covered in March and April and May and June, but the market has changed, you might have noticed, and a lot of new personas emerged as part of that. Those are the digital nomads that said, why do I need to pay for a rent in the city center when I can live and work from everywhere now that office doesn't matter as much anymore? There are, of course, all those cityscapers, the people that are taking their partners, maybe even their kids, they don't feel comfortable going on a plane, they do feel comfortable getting into the car and go into a rural or suburban location where they can relax and work at the same time. You have the people who quarantine before they meet their families, they leave their primary residence and they wanna be somewhere else for 14 days before, after they travel and before they meet their relatives. They are also people who are really jump-starting the market. And a lot of families who chose to leave the place that they work and to move for two weeks, a month, sometimes even three months to a place that have more of outdoor space um, and space for their kids. And, and um, you know, in a world where work from home became work from everywhere, we see a lot of very interesting patterns. Extended stays became a very big thing and we'll talk about that in a second. The expectation for outdoor space, the ability to have drive through destinations and domestic travel, all of those are very big patterns of COVID-19 that really made uh, the short-term rental market uh, adjust itself to try and meet the needs of, of, of all those new personas. What we did find out, especially in June and July, is that the short-term rental market is actually much better positioned than, for example, traditional hotels to deal with the current demand and the current personas. It's a lot easier to do contact-free stays when you don't need to go through a check-in counter and you don't have a concierge that you need to say hello to, and you don't have a cleaning staff that is going through hundreds of hotel rooms in the same location, that you don't need to share the lobby or some uh, public spaces. Private homes mean avoiding crowds and any common area. There's much less guest turnover. Again, you don't have hundreds of people checking in out every day. And there are fewer shared high touch surfaces such as door handles or elevator buttons at the end of the day. It's one location for one family with a team that is cleaning it very thoroughly between the different stays. And so it's much more COVID-19 safe uh, uh, to, to stay at the short-term rental property. And as a result, we see much higher occupancy rates in short-term rental properties compared to hotels. It does mean that every property manager needs to be a lot more agile and have a lot of technology that really helps doing all of that. And as I said, on our marketplace, you can find a lot of different technologies around self-check-in and check-out tools, keyless entry, tech that manages the cleaning staff remotely, so you can actually make sure that they have the playbooks to perform on and that you can adhere to the most stringent cleaning processes. And of course, communication is key. What we found out is that guests today really need certainty in a world that is much less certain. As a result of that, we started to focus even more on uh, features that has to do with communication. For example, our new seamless integration to WhatsApp that uh, was just rolled out and many others. And again, those of you who are not familiar with that, I highly encourage you um, to figure out and to read more about those vendors and our features. A really quick look into our uh, state of the industry, the property management industry report. We have uh, uh, released a report based on interviewing hundreds of property management, including probably some of you on the line. And we have found very interesting trends of, you know, what are people doing? What are other property managers doing to, uh, 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 to handle with the new situation? 60% of you uh, reported following more stringent cleaning protocols in light of COVID-19. The other 40% probably either changed it since then or doing it wrong and should really adjust right now. Uh, but it's very interesting and you can find in the report exactly what that means. Also, a lot of you, in order to handle uh, the occupancy dip, introduce flexible cancellation policy, about one in four, or reduce the nightly rate. What we are seeing now is actually that the nightly rate is going uh, down a lot less. It's actually going up compared to previous months. 
but cancellation policy is becoming a must have, maybe with the exception of some specific holidays. And again, you can read more about that in our industry report. And 38% diversify their business model to include extended stays of 28 days or more. This is in addition to those who always had extended stay. And so basically you can say that the majority of property managers now offer some kind of a plan for extended stay of 28 days or more. Very interesting. Basically means that the short-term rental industry is, is more of a flexible living industry than just short-term rental. The lines between short-term, mid-term, long-term are kind of blurry right now. We also see it in the information that we get from our friends and partners at Airbnb. They launch their monthly stays program and report 20% surge in longer term booking this year. We believe that it's going to go up in the next few months where people are getting to the end of their leases in cities and are actually choosing to be digital nomads. 80% of the hosts, which is pretty amazing, now accept longer term stays. Four in five of short term listings actually accept, by definition, non short term reservations. 50% are giving guests a discount for stay over 28 days, which basically means they price their peace of mind of having occupancy for the month uh, uh, at, at, at a higher uh, uh, margin and are allowing uh, uh, their guests to pay less for that. Part of that is that also we offer a lot of different features around extended stays and a lot of tips that you can find also on our page for ex extended stays on how to price smartly those stays, how to automate guest communication at times where uh, they are staying in the property for a longer time, how to centralize all the booking types in one multi-calendar so you can actually have the flexibility to offer short-term, mid-term, long-term stays on the same calendar, and then also offer rental agreements to the guests that are booking longer stays where you wanna have more certainty and uh, formalize the relationship more. Again, all of that you can find at our dedicated page now at Guesty. We've put a lot of effort specifically to introduce the idea of flexible inventory management. A few more points uh, uh, that are very important. Not surprisingly, 90% of the travel is powered now by domestic travel. There isn't a whole lot of uh, international travel, but surprisingly, domestic travel is actually up compared to last year. VRBO, for example, shows 15% increase in domestic travel compared to that time in uh, 2019, and it's all within 500 miles from the location, which basically means People are booking last minute and they're booking to areas that they can drive to and not fly to. Unlike flight that you need to book way in advance, getting into the car and going upstate from New York City does not require planning for four weeks and those reservations are coming much later. But there is a market to serve, even bigger than in 2019 when you look specifically at domestic travel. It is great time for the rural mountain seaside location, less of a great time for uh, the urban stays, again, not surprisingly. I highly encourage all of you to go into coronavirus.guesty.com and uh, find the resources that we're updating literally every day about how to mitigate the impact on you, how to stay informed, how to price appropriately, and how to address the traveler personas. Everything that you see today will be there as well. Our success as a market leader in short-term rental is really based on your success in, in weathering the storm and implementing all the right best practices that we'll hear here today and in previous and future meetups. So definitely check everything there out. Um, lastly, a little bit of uh, uh, data that uh, is new from the last two weeks. As I said before, long uh, uh, last minute stays are the most popular. In fact, most of the reservations now are being made in the seven days before the first uh, 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 day of the staying, before check-in, which makes our life as property managers a little bit more uh, on the edge and a little bit more stressful but this is the market and we need to know how to serve those customers. So if, for example, you used to not accept same day reservation, might be a good time to actually consider that. The second most popular group are 30 days in advance and we barely see any reservations of more than 30 days in advance today. Again, good, bad, I don't know, something to take into consideration. In terms of locations, um, Italy is one that is recovering the most. And again, more than we talk specifically about Italy, what is important here is that all those locations that were really in the lowest point in May and June and were impacted the earliest are seeing now the biggest spike and are going back to normal faster than anywhere else. And the second wave there is much more limited, which again is somewhat encouraging. Again, in case of specific month over month recovery, you see great recovery in Italy, in Australia, 
good recovery all in all with US and UK leading the way in terms of number of reservations. And then Canada that had a lot of regulation that really did not allow short-term rental properties to operate uh, at the beginning of the pandemic is now really booming when people are optimizing for domestic travel. In terms of uh, uh, nightly rate as well, we finally seeing some kind of increase in the nightly rate as well. Canada, UK, and even the US, 30% almost increase in the nightly rate. If in May we saw hosts struggling for occupancy and willing to let people stay at cost, now we're really seeing the market stabilizing and the average price is going up. And we really hope that this will continue, especially as we're heading to the fall and to the holiday season. Talking about the holiday season, what we are seeing here is very interesting. So when you look back at July 4, the last holiday that we've seen, actually there were more reservations than the year before. So if you look back, more people stayed in short-term rental uh, uh, properties in 2020, 4th of July, compared to 2019. If you look to the future, you don't see a lot of those reservations in advance for Christmas and New Year like we've seen in previous uh, years. Looking at this data and the trends today, what we assume will happen is that actually the holidays are gonna be strong, even stronger than 2019, but because of the current climate, because of the current uh, uh, situation where people are just uncertain about their plans, a lot of those reservations will only come at September and October. So Thanksgiving is already at the same level of 2019 and we expect it to be busier, just like July, 14, uh, July 4th was. And for Christmas and New Year's, we're really hoping that we're gonna to get to 2019 levels or even more, but again, those reservations will come later. Now I'm gonna take a deep breath and let the experts talk. Uh, and I'm really excited to hear what they have to say. First one is Michael Dreger, who's joining us from uh, Canada and he's the CEO of Operto, a marketplace partner of ours who has helped in the last few months, a lot of customers to really work out and streamline all their operational processes to make sure that they can uh, really be top of the industry when it comes to uh, 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 cleaning and, and, and uh, uh, just operational acceptance of new guests. Michael, thanks for joining us. Thanks very much for having me. So uh, I just want to talk a little bit about um, catering to these new travelers that are coming um, using contact solutions and, and, and monitoring. Um, a little bit about Operto, we're a, a property automation system that basically allows you to connect from Guesty, take all of your bookings, and synchronize them with the IoT devices. So that smart locks, intercoms, if you have them in an apartment building, sensors and, and uh, thermostats. Um, so the first thing I want to really talk about is that even as travel starts to resume, um, pretty much people want to continue uh, social distancing. Um, and so that means limited or zero interaction with the host is usually um, the, the preference of, of most travelers. Um, self, a self-catered experience as much as possible, the ability to order Uber Eats and have it come to your house, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then rigorous cleaning, I think, has always been expected, but now is, is really something front and center in many people's minds. We conducted a, uh, a traveler preference survey back in June of this year, and it was more to sort of get a, a baseline for data that we saw from Booking.com in 2018. So in 2018, Booking.com ran a survey in, in Europe, and so we decided to conduct one this year in North America. Um, and what we found was that 81% of guests like self-check-in, like, so they prefer it. Um, back in 2018, that number was only 63%. So it's not really surprising that that number would have gone up uh, in the last two years. Um, some things that were a little more surprising was that 30% of respondents liked it more than they did six months ago. That's not surprising. What did surprise us was that all age groups overwhelmingly preferred it, but it wasn't millennials that preferred it the most. The strongest majority of people were actually 30 to 40 that uh, preferred keyless entry and, and their own self check-in. Um, and vacation rentals have, have actually begun to create the demand for keyless entry, um, which we're seeing in hotels now as well. So the vacation rental industry sort of pioneers of, uh, of keyless and automated entry, probably going back as long as 10 years ago uh, with smart locks that have keypads. Um, and so that expectation that people are finding at uh, in vacation rentals, they're starting to ask for it now in hotels. So we've seen a real uptick in, uh, in hotel clients in the last little while. Pretty much every traveler uh, group that we surveyed wants secure and contactless self-check-in. Um, you know, you, you don't want to be getting the same code 
uh, one, two, three, four. It doesn't make you feel very safe when you get into a place if the code was one, two, three, four. Um, you want to make sure that your code is unique to you and that it's going to expire at the end of your stay. So it's, you know, it's your code. It's not a code for thousands of other travelers that may have been there. Um, our system will allow you to know whether people are in or not. Um, we can monitor noise and occupancy. So in terms of the technology that people are really looking for, um, the work from homers, obviously, they'll, they'll want, if they're working from your vacation rental, they'll want really strong and consistent Wi-Fi. Uh, Zoom recommends 1.5 uh, M MPBS ups and downs. Um, and, and Andrea is going to talk about the comfortable work environment that they will want. Um, so she, I'll, I'll let, she's the expert in that. I'll let her cover that. But you'll also want a nice place to be working. You know, ideal temperature, you know, good air quality, you know, not stuffy and, you know, you'd be falling asleep because it's, so, it's such a stuffy uh, space. Um, digital guidebooks uh, are becoming really popular just because they allow you to figure out what's available locally so that you can order it and bring it to you. Um, the, a lot of people are, are uh, you know, not too keen to travel as much as they, uh, as they were before and go out and dine out. So more, the more you have the ability to say what people can bring in, the better. Um, and then noise and occupancy monitoring isn't just to protect properties. It's also for the, you know, the well-being of, of, uh, of the staycationer, you know, nice quiet place to sleep, a nice, you know, good air quality, et cetera. Um, in terms of the air quality thing, I've always been a big proponent of this just because, um, well, CO2 is, we all breathe it out at a constant rate. But what's really interesting about it is if the CO2 levels get too high in a space, you see your sleep quality gets bad and your cognitive functions start to slow down. It's that feeling you get when you're in a boardroom and there are too many people in the room and everyone starts feeling sleepy. That's just too much CO2 in a space. Um, so it's a very interesting way to simultaneously tell you if a space is overoccupied, but also if a space needs a fresh air, so outdoor air. Um, so that allows you to sort of be more marketable in your listings to be able to say, I've got that, you know, you, you we're monitoring the air quality, we're monitoring uh, noise level. Um, and also monitoring humidity is really important just because the, it reduces the chance of dry, virus transmission and mold. Um, most people don't really, uh, like, aren't really aware of how important it is uh, to have optimal um, relative humidity. So in terms of optimal relative humidity for human comfort, um, so too dry, we start getting dry eyes and, you know, dry mouth, dry nose, lots of static electricity. Too humid, it feels like you, you just can't get you know, comfortable, you're too sweaty. But that's actually great because that's actually also the optimum temperature to sort of keep bacteria growth down, viruses not airborne, mites down, uh, respiratory infections, all of these things um, are sort of all complementary if you can keep the relative humidity between 40 and let's say 60. You can let it slide. Let's call it 30 to 70% relative humidity, sort of, sort of the range that you're always, you're always trying to hit. Um, the other thing about, uh, about the sensors that we use is just, it allows you to know the difference between a work from Homer, because you don't always get to know that necessarily, um, or someone who's a staycationer. And because a lot of uh, guests who are staycationers have lo know people locally, that's where a lot of the parties are happening. Um, we're hearing a lot of demand for, for noise monitoring now, because if you can't go out to the local restaurant to meet and have a party with your friends, a lot of them are having them um, in, in vacation rentals. Um, so just knowing the difference between what is, you know, noise of someone listening to the radio versus noise of someone having 10 people, 15 people over is pretty useful to be able to know. Um, so that's, that's my sort of quick little introduction and some of the info that we have. But the summary is generally the guests are looking for contactless check-in. I think they were, there was a trend that had started way back, booking sort of has, had confirmed that, we've reconfirmed that it's growing. Um, there's a clear and consistent uh, contactless check-in experience that's pretty critical so that they have, you know, you want guests to feel safe and secure, like, you know, you don't want to be um, ha handing them a, 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 a code that obviously was given to other guests. Um, rigorous cleaning always has been an expectation, but it's just in the new uh, traveler persona, it'll just be even more critical that you, uh, that you sort of market how well uh, you do what you do well, which is cleaning and running your properties. That's, that's all I have. I'll turn it over to, uh, to the other experts. 
Thank you so much, Michael. And again, highly recommend for those of you who have not implemented some of those processes to reach out to Michael or reach out to your guesty contact so we can connect you with uh, our friends at Operto. Definitely something that customers uh, and guests are expecting and something that can be relatively easily implemented. And the team at Operto, we know from a lot of our customers have gone through the process with many, many hosts um, over the last few months. Uh, so they'll be uh, happy to be available for you as well. And now straight to the first lady of this meetup, Andrea, who's joining us from her very well furnished room uh, <laughs> to share with us everything around creating the work and live environment that our guests are actually expecting in the new reality. Hey, Andrea. Hey, thank you for having me. Uh, let me just share my screen here so we can talk about more than this room. Great, great, great. Awesome. Thank you for having me. So uh, yes, I am Andrea Santos. I am the CEO of Full House. Um, I'm really happy to be talking to you guys today about working from home. As uh, everyone at Full House has been doing for a little while, we're slowly trickling back to work. But we've experienced a lot of things, as I'm sure a lot of your guests have. So we're really excited to kind of dive in, tell you what we've learned and um, how we can help you guys. So uh, if you don't know, Full House is a turnkey design solution specifically catering to the short-term rental market. So what we developed is a house in a box, which is really everything you need to get your place furnished as quickly as possible. So in as little as three weeks, we take care of everything down to the final photos so that you're really optimizing your listing for you know, the best results. So in this endeavor, what we've discovered about COVID is that as mentioned, guests are working from their rentals, people are working from home and they've been cooped up in their homes. So they're looking for alternative places to work. Um, often these guests are coming with their families. Kids have also been cooped up. So they're looking for other places that kids can be entertained as well as getting some work done. So naturally these people are domestic travelers, often um, coming from nearby locations. So what we know about these nomad workers is that half of the US workforce is currently working from home. Um, we also know that actually 50% of the US and UK workforce are also uh, freelance now. So this is a trend that's only increasing whether it's COVID or not. More and more people are working from home. So you have to imagine that you're probably gonna see these longer stays even post the pandemic. Also, we notice that people are a lot more productive working from home, but there are certain caveats to what that means. Working from home has to have the right amenities. So how are you going to attract these people and what are the amenities that you have to offer? So first things first, you need a workspace. So a good workspace, starting with the desk, what does that mean? Can you use your dining room? Can you use your counter? Not really. The truth is that a good desk needs to have enough space. It needs to be at least 24 inches deep, at least 32 inches wide, and surprisingly, the height doesn't necessarily matter. The right chair is what will lead you to having a comfortable seat at your desk. So the chair should tuck comfortably below the desk in order for you to sit comfortably. So about that chair, um, there are a couple of things that are really important. Obviously the back support, non-negotiable, people need to lean back. Um, I actually threw up my back working at my dining table and had to get uh, expensive Cairo visits and which led me to discover the elbow test. So putting your elbows comfortably, making sure your elbows sit comfortably, which they don't right now, um, on your desk and that you're not raising your shoulders up. So that is the optimal position for really sitting at your desk. And of course, to have it mobile and adjustable because different people obviously have passed that elbow test differently. So having a desk that does go up and down is really key to catering to different people from all walks of life. And of course, good lighting. Good lighting is really important. Having your desk by a window is ideal. It, it causes much less fatigue on the eyes. You can sit there a, a little longer and get some work done. Um, so yeah, it promotes a lot of better health. But yes, of course, always having task lighting, being able to see your desktop, your papers, your notebooks, um, super, super key as well. And finally, and most importantly, I like to say location, 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 because Guests are coming with their families or others, and each one of them needs a private space to work. Um, so often you're gonna need to keep your desk in the bedroom. 
think about your capacity, how many people are in that home or how many people you can expect to be working there. Often if it's a family, maybe mom and dad both need their own independent space and they both need to have their own conversations and Zoom calls. So be conscious of having enough spaces for the capacity of your guests, at least two, if you really are trying to cater to like the family and the nomad worker. Um, I know we just did a trip, we just did a trip up uh, to the coast and uh, my friend, a friend of ours even brought her own desk. We called to check the Wi-Fi. We, we had an iMac brought in. It was like a whole ordeal to try and set this place up for work from home. So, um, well, in addition to that, of course, greenery is going to uh, be a huge asset as well. People are leaving their homes to go to the outdoors. So bringing some of that outdoors in is going to obviously make everyone stay a little bit more comfortable. But we're really excited is to be launching here today our new work from home packages. So I'm sure it's been hard for a lot of people to adjust and like, what can you get? Of course, you need to get that desk to cater to this to this new customer base. Um, so we've launched these five new packages in uh, North America. And so just to walk you through them really quickly, we're offering them at a $200 a month uh, rental package. So we have the executive package. Uh, the Zencha package, craft work, modest, and this includes everything that you see on the screen. So you get your desk, your lamp, your chair, your artwork, some accessories as well to kind of make it also beautiful and homey. People are attracted to beautiful listings and your colonel. So really exciting. You can call us later to ask about those. And then we also have to cater to the families, right? So mom and dad are not the only ones at home and uh, kids need some entertainment and people are looking to distract them so we can get some work done. So how do you do that? Get an entertainment station. It's simple. Hit your thrift store, grab some books, grab some games, uh, just give them some tools that they, can, um, that they can use, whether it's to play outside or within the home, give them something to do. Of course, adding a swing is, a, is fun for everyone. Very importantly is to equip your kitchen. Um, families need a lot more equipment and, and guests need a lot more equipment than your basics. These are no longer people who are just coming and spending, the, you know, sleeping at home and they're out for the whole day. They're spending a lot more time. They're cooking their own meals. They're not spending every meal out. So having a well-equipped kitchen for cooking, even some light baking, uh, food processing, think about the, the small appliances that you also need to have in that kitchen. We also offer kitchen packages for those who need it. And this is a fun one, transformative design. Think outside the box. Think about how you can use your table um, and your chairs in different ways. In this case, this was a fun one that we designed, a ping pong dining table, uh, which easily converts to a fun time for the family. So when it's all too much to think about, you know who to call. Uh, we do hope that we can offer you guys some good advice and some good tips. Um, but yeah, give us a call if you want us to handle it and you don't want to. Thanks so much. Thank you, Andrea. That was great. Uh, and from here, we're going to move to Roman at Casa. A lot of people are asking us who is doing it right. Do we have any customers that are really trying to sit down, understand how to change their strategy and actually saw an increase in their market share, in their booking, in their occupancy. Uh, and Casa is one of them. I can say that. So Roman doesn't, uh, doesn't need to uh, uh, risk his humility. Um, so very excited to have uh, Roman Patton, who's the uh, CEO and founder of Casa Living, to share a little bit about they have seen, what they have seen in the last few months from the property manager chair and some tips about uh, what they recommend all of us to do. Roman, thanks for joining. Great. Th thank you. Uh, these have been great so far. You, just to confirm, can you see my screen? So that, uh, excellent. And I'm not sure we're doing everything right. I failed during Andrea's presentation, both the elbow and the shoulder test. Uh, so we have, we, have, we have a lot to learn, but I'm excited to share. Uh, as you said, I'm Roman Padan, I'm founder and CEO of Casa Living. I'll start quickly with a background on Casa and try to focus most of the presentation on COVID-19 and its impacts on the business and how we've adjusted things so far. So as Omer mentioned, we're building a global accommodations brand that's beloved by guests, indispensable to property partners and desired by neighbors. That's our mission. Our three stakeholders that we care dearly about are guests, uh, property partners and neighbors. Neighbors are people who live in Casa buildings who are not Casa guests in a lot of buildings. They're the majority of the property. We're a values-driven organization. Six, the six values we deeply care about 
are here. One that I'll highlight is flexibility. Uh, no more than ever before is flexibility important in the short-term rental business and really critical to us. Guests really care about flexibility, the flexible stays that were mentioned, 30-day stays or longer, shorter stays are really important. And owners really care about them as well as do property managers. Incorporating flexibility into contracts has never been more important. So that's a value that is deeply embedded in what we do and also uh, is quite critical at this moment during COVID-19. So a little bit more about how we're building that global brand. We partner with owners or property managers to turn their vacancy into cash flow. Uh, we handle all the work of the short-term uh, rental program. So we implement it from the regulatory side, from the uh, furnishing side to the operations and owners collect the cash flow. And usually that cash flow is an increase over their alternative. Right now, their alternative for many is vacancy. So a infinite increase, but during normal times, it's an increase of 20 to 50% in net operating income. Our model is scales across the country. We're really focused on being flexible in geography, as well as other parts of our business where we operate in 30 cities right now. We're adding locations frequently. And it's a, importantly, as the, 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 the spread is the diversity of locations. So we certainly operate in urban centers like Chicago and San Francisco, where we're based. But we're also in, city, in places like Davie, Florida, in Des Moines, uh, and, and smaller locations across the, across the country. So suburban and urban locations are, are quite important to, to be able to operate in. And especially right now, the suburban and, and drive to markets are quite critical. That flexibility extends to property types. So we work with high rises, garden style properties, mid rises, and there's a lot of that, that diversity leads to quite a bit of operational complexity as property managers on the call may may uh, be familiar with. And so being able to adapt our operations to the different types of properties is uh, very, uh, very challenging, but important, especially amid COVID. We also operate in full buildings, full floors, and sometimes spread throughout floors. I'd say spread throughout floors in apartment buildings is the most challenging since then the mix of long-term and short-term guests uh, come together and making sure that comes together in a symbiotic way is, is quite uh, critical. And you can see some of the styling uh, for, of our units here uh, and, and on, on this slide as well. Hopefully Andrea doesn't get too angry with us. We, have, we, can, always, we can always improve uh, uh, with, with some of the work that she does. Uh, and you can see some of our uh, properties have amazing amenities. We included a, a photo of an empty pool here to get everyone's summer dreams uh, uh, brightened up. Team-wise, uh, we're lucky to be working alongside some amazing professionals who come from a variety of backgrounds. The, the purpose of this slide is to highlight some things that property managers on, the, on this webinar may want to double down on. So some expertise that we think is critical that maybe is not obvious as the, on the legal side. We have a really skilled regulatory compliance and real estate team. The regulatory landscape amid COVID has really changed uh, and is quite dynamic. And so having a team that can uh, respond quickly is important. Contracts within this environment need to be flexible and a team that's really thoughtful in how to craft those contracts is critical. Similarly, operations have never been more difficult uh, within COVID-19. Guests are different than before and the types of situations that arise are unique and uh, up, you, know, you, you have to react with vigor and, and thoughtfulness and our team comes from the likes of Shell and Whole Foods and Conley and Silvers and, and been blessed with great team members. And, and, and finally, real estate expertise is quite critical. My background is in real estate and our team's background is in real estate and understanding short-term rentals is a blend of real estate technology, brand and marketing and, and real estate. And so having that expertise is quite important. Uh, and, 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 and finally, brand and marketing with the changing in personas of, of guests, which I'll, I'll highlight uh, in, in the next two slides, comes a need to reach those guests effectively and more than ever, having that expertise is quite critical. So if you're a property manager, honing that, uh, that set of skills is important. I didn't highlight technology, uh, but that, that's very important for us, but not necessarily for every property manager, as you can work with companies like Aperto or Guesty, uh, as well as us, if, 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 you, if you would like to, to complement your operating capabilities. So let's talk COVID-19. I'm going to talk about some changes, both operationally and to 
uh, the types of guests that have stayed with us and some of the changes that we've made. So this slide I've included because it's, uh, it's obviously very critical, but it also is probably the most well covered. So won't spend too much time. If you are operating a property management company, you must do these things. You must upgrade your cleaning and maintenance. Omer mentioned that most either already had really high standards or have upgraded them. We've used CDC approved EPA registered disinfectants, provided our team with PPE, uh, provided gloves, ensured that on-site personnel are all using masks, ensured that guests know that they must wear masks, ensured that uh, guests know that they shouldn't stay if they have COVID system, uh, symptoms, and confirmed with guests that they're complying with local ordinances like requirements for quarantine or the requirements that they're essential workers. You, you must do these things. And we've incorporated the, this into both the operations as well as into the automated messages that we send and the ways that we confirm guests. To that point, uh, we have an internal system that confirms uh, every guest's reservations and ensures that their reservation isn't fraudulent, that it's not a bad actor. This is a system that is more important than ever. Trust broadly is more important than ever. Trust in cleaning, but also trust in the types of guests that stay. And I'm sure that the property managers on this webinar have experienced an increase in bad guests that are attempting to stay with you. Hopefully you've been preventing them from staying. We've doubled down on, uh, on preventive measures. We have in-unit reactive measures like decibel sensors, cigarette and marijuana, uh, sensors, some of the things that Michael Roberto mentioned. Uh, we also do preventive uh, things to try to get ahead of the issues and ensure that bad guests are not staying with us. So we run background checks on every guest. We also have beefed up a system that uh, predicts whether a guest is likely to be a bad actor, looking at a variety of factors around their location, the type of, uh, the type of payment that they use, the type of telephone they've used, if it's a burner phone, et cetera. And it's proven to be really indispensable amid COVID-19. Uh, and it, 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 it not only prevents bad guests, but it also reduces the likelihood of chargebacks. We collect a lot of information that the uh, credit card companies, uh, when they receive a chargeback request from us, and so with that information, we're able to win quite a few of those. I mentioned that because I'm guessing that those on the line have also seen an increase in chargebacks, and so being able to rigorously work through those is quite important. We talked about contactless arrival, the lock system, uh, that that Aperto can help to integrate and 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 we have as well is is really critical uh, and and more critical than ever. We've on top of that built a system that helps people get from their car to their door with step by step instructions. Something like this is important, reducing the amount of time people are spending getting to their door, touching objects that are in the common areas of the building will both make the neighbors in the building and the guests that are staying with you feel more comfortable. And this is a system we're constantly improving upon uh, and, and would recommend something like it to those who are operating across the country and world. So let's talk a little bit about uh, demand and what we've been seeing. Uh, and this is uh, to double down on the point Omer made around short-term rentals and vacation rentals having seen a very swift recovery. This shows the recovery relative to hotels, uh, a good comparison point. Our results have been double hotels, and it's a testament, I think, partially to our positioning, but partially to the growing importance of short-term rentals nationally. Uh, one thing that has been fueling that increase above hotels for us is an increase in direct bookings, so bookings through casa.com. We've seen those triple over the last uh, few months, and part of that reason for the tripling is a increase in the amount of guests that are booking a second time with us. So often the first, uh, the first reservation is done through a third party channel. The second reservation is done through our website. We've also focused on remarketing CASA to guests that live within driving distance of the CASAs that, uh, so if you're within 500 miles of a CASA, we'll likely reach out to you. Uh, we offered extensions at discounts to existing guests. We also executed campaigns to reach out to universities, to hospital workers, to essential workers, to relocation agents, and that has helped to drive that direct booking velocity. We have not spent anything on online advertising to date, although that's not to say it's, a, that it's not a bad thing to spend on online advertising. We've seen and, and heard anecdotally that the returns on that spending are higher than they've ever been before. Amid all of this, uh, we've seen an increase from owners 
uh, and property managers uh, demanding our services. So we've grown from the end of last year through uh, the end of June and even more through July 2020 in terms of the units under management. Uh, we, we, one thing to note here that's very important is we've been growing entirely on service agreements rather than leases or master leases. We think that it is a trend across the industry and should be doubled down on. Master leases we've seen through a few uh, quite high profile examples create a mismatch between risk of the operator and the owner and are not a sustainable way forward. So if you're, if you're a manager, we'd recommend switching to service agreements. The way service agreements work is we partner with the owner to deliver the most cash flow to them and we take a fee in exchange for all the work that's involved in delivering it uh, from the start to the finish, from the build out and the furnishing and the regulatory to the managing day to day 24 seven. So guest personas uh, are a, have, have changed, but have actually stayed the same and reallocated in a way. And the two guest personas that, uh, that Andrea mentioned are our most common. Uh, so families and business travelers have been the majority of our stays historically. There are over 80% of our guests uh, stays, uh, but the, there's been a reallocation between them. Historically, business travelers have been the vast majority of our stays, and now families are the vast majorities of our stays. Some of the things, the, just to give a quick, the families CASA as a home are those who are staying for 30 days or longer and really are using CASA as their home away from home whereas the other family groups are staying for a shorter period of time, maybe it's a week or two weeks. Uh, we've also seen some niche demand drivers from international travelers, from university students who are stranded from relocating, uh, people who are relocating, and we've been focused on making sure we cater to them. The, the characteristics of the stays, this has already been touched on, so has increased, uh, has, has changed. So our average length of stay has increased dramatically. We've also seen improvements in non-urban locations. Instead of going deep on the personas, because I think these have been covered, I'd actually rather talk about the job that encompasses all the personas. So uh, there were quite a few on the last slide, but there's a job that we do for those guests that all of them require. We provide, and that job is providing a safe and trustworthy place to stay in a convenient location at a great value, which delivers comfort and space of a home. Uh, and when you need that job done, you typically need a longer stay. You might be traveling with more people. Our average reservation is three people. An average hotel stay is uh, sub 1.5 people. Uh, you might be on a constrained budget, not necessarily a low budget, but you are thoughtful about your budget uh, and you want to still get quality for, for your spend. And you probably have some important purpose. You need that trust or you have important cargo, whether it's your family or it's a business trip. There's something important about it. A lot of times people say, hey, business travelers and, and families have very different needs, but I would argue that the job we're doing for them is very similar. And under this context, you actually can then expand and solve that job for a lot more people. So we think about it as what job are we solving for? And we're always making sure we're better for longer stays, we're better uh, option for people who are traveling with more guests, we're better, we're better value, and we're trusted. So if you have important purpose or important cargo, we are a good option for you. So I'll end where I began. Uh, the future is all about flexibility. It's a core value for us. We think it should be a core value for all property managers. It's more important than ever for guests. They want flexible lengths of stay. They want, uh, in addition to attractive value, convenient locations and a trusted provider. And owners want flexibility here as well. They wanna be able to increase the short stay program or decrease it as necessary and they want to make sure that they're able to fill vacancy today but also think about how to appropriately uh, think about vacancy in the future so that's that's all i have i really appreciate the time and if you have questions you can email me my email is at the bottom perfect thank you so much roman i see a lot of questions and now it's time for us to move to a bit of a moderated q a but before i even get there as expected when you show the slide that shows direct booking going up from 7% to about 30% Roman, we did get a lot of questions. So one thing that I wanted to ask you is, you know, it makes sense that the wave is going up for uh, the first time that people are extending their stay, but what are you guys doing to make sure that even in 2021 or 2022, 30% or one in every three reservation will come through a direct channel and not through the OTAs? Anything that you are doing around that? 
Yeah, it's a it's an excellent question, and and one we we all we do love reservations through the OTAs. So Airbnb guests, Expedia, Booking.com guests have are are phenomenal guests, and we welcome them in. What we've been seeing the biggest driver is people who are booking us for five days or ten days, and then realizing how much they and they're just trying it out. They realize how much they enjoy uh, they enjoy their stay, and then they're extending for a month or two longer. And what we're doing is making it very easy for them to extend those stays directly through our website. So that's, that's probably the largest driver. Marketing directly to our historical customers has also helped quite a bit, but that was a drive, that's probably a surprising driver that maybe others uh, can, can use in their own operations. That's great, and those are great metrics. Thanks for sharing them. Let me start with a question to all of you guys. We're trying to make those sessions very actionable for everybody on the line. If you could recommend what would be the one first action item, let's call it Monday morning action item, or in our case, maybe Thursday morning action item, what do you think should be the first bullet point that uh, the property managers on the line should actually have as their first action item after this session today? Michael, let's maybe start with you. Yeah, well, definitely, I'd say it's get a, get a smart lock. Um, I mean, that, that's what everyone's expecting. What's really interesting that we're seeing now is that we have uh, in Montana, uh, for example, they have a lot of, um, they have all these programs that will fund the new normal. So basically like uh, COVID relief funding. And so we have a number of clients that are basically getting in everything financed by, by these programs. So that's one way to figure out whether or not the owner should pay for it or whoever should pay for it. Guess what? In Montana, the government will pay for it. Um, for, uh, and if you're also struggling, if you're outside of those, Operto also has a plan very similar to uh, full houses plan where it's, everything is in a box. So we can send a financed version of the lock, uh, how to connect it to the internet and then the sensor. So just, it's, it's just having that be easy is very important. So getting a virtual lock, the first action item, Andrea, what will be your suggested first action item tomorrow morning for everybody? Make sure you have good Wi-Fi. <laughs> I think that is the biggest pain for everyone. Uh, you know, for sure the workspace is is like probably number two, but you're not going to win anybody over if they get there to a beautiful workspace and the Wi-Fi is shite. So <laughs> let's make sure that the Wi-Fi is up to speed. Um, but yeah, definitely once that's settled, you know, and assuming you do have that settled, um, you know, the workstation is what people are looking for. If it's not visible in your photos, make sure it is, uh, make sure it's attractive, right? People like photos do sell. That's your best asset that you have to sell your property are those awesome photos. So make sure that you have a really good shot of the possibilities so somebody can visualize themselves working in that space, living in that space for a longer term. Uh, make it feel homey because people are spending so much more time indoors. So it's, um, so yeah, so really it, the interior of your stay has become more important than it ever has in the past. So it really is important to kind of spend some time, look at the, look at what you can add to really make it feel like it's a home. Yeah. Love it. NSW, no shite Wi-Fi. And I would actually, <laughs> yeah, this is kind of funny because in April and May, what we've seen is that people actually for the first time adding to the titles of their listings, clean, super clean and for June and July, the trend has been amazing Wi-Fi, cyber optic Wi-Fi, speed of light Wi-Fi. People are actually putting it in the name of the listing again, showing how much people care about that. So workstation and Wi-Fi, thank you for those. Roman, first action item that you suggest. Maybe uh, in, in, rather than a tactical uh, action item, a mindset uh, action item, which is to uh, plan, make sure your business works for a very long uh, COVID. So don't, if, if you're planning for it to be a year or two years, make sure it works for five years. Um, so to do things, and, and I think that is a challenging mindset to come into because a lot, I hear a lot of optimism around things will come back to normal by 2021. Maybe that's true, but assume it will take until 2025 and then figure out how to make the business work in that context. Lots of optimism, 2025, okay, got it. Got it. Hope for the best, but make sure you don't, the worst would be if it didn't happen and your, your, your business suffers and you, you can't make it through, through a very heavy and long winter. Absolutely agreed. Let's jump into some of the questions that we got from the audience. 
Michael, a lot of people are saying, what is my playbook in order to be considered contact-free? A lot of hosts want to say, I'm a contact-free listing, contact-free property. What are the things that we need to check in terms of the boxes to actually qualify to be what guests expect as contact-free listing? So yeah, contact-free would basically be no, no greeter, definitely. I mean, um, you're running to limit interactions. The, you know, having another person physically meet another person is definitely not the way to go. Um, so the, the, uh, you want to think too of a smart lock that basically can be really easily wiped down, like very, very easily wiped down with disinfectant, which is really quite easy to do. The touchscreen ones are a little bit better. The button ones are just as fine. Um, th that's probably, that's the main point, right? Is that there needs to be an ability for them to just check themselves in with a four digit access code using their phone, whatever the case may be. Obviously a uh, four digit access code is going to be the better mode. Um, it's the most applicable to the widest audience. A smartphone isn't always, you know, while they're ubiquitous, um, not everyone knows how to operate IOT devices from their smartphones. So as long as you can basically turn it into like an ATM withdrawal, one, two, three, four, it's, it's, it's going to be much easier for everyone to be able to just check themselves in. Thank you, Michael. And again, you can find a lot of this data on our website as well. And of course, on Lopardo's website. Andrew, a question for you. What we see more and more is, you know, digital nomads, people who say, why would I pay so much for a one bedroom in New York or San Francisco or Chicago and just tra traveling and working remotely a month at a time with my two suitcases. What are the things that you want to make sure that you have in your units to actually cater for that specific persona, the people who get out of their leases and start working from anywhere instead of working from home? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm kind of one of those people. So, um, you know, from experience, <laughs> from experience, I can tell you that, you know, as much as, it, you know, you want to come to a space and um, similarly to a lot of things I touched on, the, the most frustrating thing is not having a, a cutting board, not having the proper tools in the kitchen. And then you realize that, do I really want to go have to equip this guy's kitchen? You know, shouldn't that be his responsibility? Shouldn't he have known that this is going to be a longer term stay? So it's like, really think about those things. Like if you were to live there, like what are the minimum requirements you would need? Um, a lot of things is, is like noise, obviously, making sure that uh, you have a well insulated space or, or that you're able to control that. Do you have noisy neighbors? Um, yeah, so really catering to, to the people who, um, I mean, walking distance, things within walking distance are also super important. So having a good map or having good access to like what's around. People want to get to know their local environments. And the best way to get to know that is through the host. So, you know, really offering that information and, and allowing people to, to get involved with the local community, that's what they're looking for when they're moving to a space for a couple of months. So be a part of that sort of, you know, onboarding and bring them into, into this new community. So I think that's a couple of points that I would really strongly recommend. Yeah. That's great. Making it personal, even if you don't meet them in yeah. person. I like that. Totally. Yeah. Going again to some of the questions that we got, Roman, you had a question from Ahmed who's joining us and he's asking, given the uncertainty of the COVID situation, do you invest in the property transformation yourself or is it the owners? Who actually invests the money to do all the adjustments needed in the units in order to make them COVID-19 friendly? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Uh, ultimately, regardless of who invests, what has to be there is the return on the investment. So you have to be able to generate enough income for that investment to make sense. And then the person or entity that invests in it should uh, be aligned in the risk that they're taking with the ultimate outcome. So we, the, what we're really good at is delivering the service of short-term rentals in buildings. And we, we invest all of our money into building and improving upon that service. We then... Uh, we then implement the actual uh, the actual capex required, but we do not pay for it. The owner pays for it. The reason the owner pays for it is because they get the benefit of the cash flow that we create for them. So we will do all the work. They will pay for it, and then they'll get all the profit from it. Uh, so they they take the risk. But the reason they're willing to take the risk is because we can demonstrate to them that there's a really good return on that investment. That's great. Thank you. Moving back to you, Michael, we're going to do another, let's say, two or three rounds like this. So feel free, all of you, to uh, uh, send us some questions so we can introduce them to our panels. One question that, Michael, came for you is, 
around the management of cleaning staff. A lot of the people on the line have cleaning staff and they're unable to meet them. They're operating on their own. What are tips that you might have around how to manage the maintenance staff uh, to make sure that they're meeting the standards of COVID-19? Are there any clear cleaning guidelines that you recommend following in that regard? There, I mean, there's a lot out there. Um, I mean, Breezeway's has gotten their own uh, VR scheduler, has a really great one. They also have like a little training uh, thing from VR scheduler. Um, with One of the things that we're doing with, with them is just, um, obviously you wanna have coordination so that people literally aren't passing each other. So oftentimes what we have on, on our system is, is the guests have the ability to uh, check themselves out and that alerts the cleaners. So then the cleaner knows to show up and there's no one there. Um, so we can do that either through occupancy or we mostly we do it through um, a, a ch when someone uses their checkout code. But those, those are probably the, uh, the, the two simplest things is the, is the training and the, uh, and the just knowing that a guest isn't there so that it's safe to do the cleaning. Andrea, what are the most unique requests that you have heard from like families that are traveling? Maybe give us a little bit of like spicy stories about interesting requests that you've heard from hosts based on what they got from guests. What are the unexpected we should start expecting? Oh, that's, that's a, I feel like I should tap into my team for this one because we giggle about these things quite often. Um, oh man, I, I couldn't off the top of my head remember certain things, but definitely when people are furnishing their spaces, everybody's got a lot of opinion. So um, we really build out these sort of house in a box packages. So they are pretty, you know, painless. Um, you just pick one, one of six styles and we pick your size and then we ship it out. And then we'll even install it and, and handle all the service for you. But nonetheless, people still want to know, okay, but wait, can I change a lamp? And can I change this? And can I change that? So we've had some really wacky requests where like they're out of line with like the original design direction. And now we're sort of wallpapering the whole space in like a pink uh, puffy sort of wallpaper. And it's, it's just like, you know, you gotta, you gotta do what your clients um, ask for. So, um, but yeah, that's been interesting. And of course this catering to the Nashville demographic of, uh, you know, bachelorette parties and, and bachelor parties. So so, you know, we really have to do things that are really outside of our box that are not necessarily within our even, you know, style, personal styles or aesthetics. Um, but yeah, we, we just have to kind of close our eyes and, okay, we're painting this green, here we go. <laughs> and, and that's what you gotta do sometimes. But it does actually cater to the market that we're in. So you do, we do have to be conscious of where we are, what you're doing. Um, and people do wanna travel to a space that feels authentic to right. the location. Right. right. So, you know, whether it's whether you would bring it home with you or not, um, it's got to feel like Nashville in Nashville. Yeah, perfect. By the way, we're going to launch a poll for those of you who are uh, with us on the line live and not just watching it afterwards. Feel free to answer those questions. It's going to help us uh, cater the, the next session to you and also uh, let us know if you want to hear more about Guesty. Let's continue with the questions. Roman, this one is for you as somebody who really was able to optimize with CASA around the needs of the new guests and get more direct reservations and others. What are you guys doing today to try and get future reservations for more than seven days? In order to do a lot of planning when you have a big uh, portfolio, you really want to get some reservations for more than seven days in advance. Anything you guys are doing to try and, and introduce more of those? And just so that, uh, just to just to clarify, more than seven days in advance or longer stays? Uh, stays more than seven days in advance. So advance reservations, not necessarily longer reservations. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, I, I don't think there's been anything that we've done so far to crack to 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 crack that. It's very difficult to change people's behaviors broadly, and right now people's behaviors are uh, are, are focused on flexibility and are. Are, are, are focused on the fact that there's a bit of uncertainty around what's happening in two months or one month from now. So, you know, you could do, we try it, we have tried a few things like discounts for, uh, for stays that are far in the future and discounts for longer stays as well. But the reality is if people don't want to book far in advance, uh, they're likely not to. One thing you can do is increase your cancellation, you know, change your cancellation policies. You alluded to that. We have done it 
because it is market standard to, to do it, but it doesn't change people's behavior. So I think what needs to ha happen is people, have to, people need to change their perspective and perception on what the future holds. And that may not, that's not something that we can control. So unfortunately not a panacea uh, that I can offer people. And another strategic question for you that I'm seeing now in the chat, Roman, is there is a lot of consolidation and a lot of the demand that hotels used to get before is now coming to short term rental properties. Do you foresee hotels getting more into the space and presenting competition? So hotels getting you know, into Yeah, for, first on the consolidation point, uh, while there's been some consolidation in the industry, I think that there's too much growth in the space for it to be about consolidation or growth opportunity. Uh, consolidation happens in mature industries. Short-term rentals are, any, you know, are not a mature industry at the moment. There's so much more uh, opportunity to add new locations and units and cities. And so I'm excited about that growth. In terms of hotels getting into this, they'll certainly adapt parts of their operations to look like uh, short-term short rentals. So they'll do contactless arrival. They'll think a little bit more rigorously around their costs. As to whether they go into uh, to short-term rentals in a professional way, that, that will take them a lot longer to adapt to. It's a very different business. It's a different job to be done than that we're, what they're used to. So they might consider doing it, but it'll take them a bit of time if they decide to do it. And if they decide to do it, they'll have to dive in uh, with, with full intention of it being a very large part of their business. Uh, so yet to, be, yet to be determined. My bet is that they, they don't, but we'll, we'll see. Okay, that makes sense. And then one more question uh, uh, for you specifically, Michael, that I'm saying is in terms of, you know, one technology besides uh, uh, virtual lock that you need to introduce, would that be noise canceling? Would that be something else? If you only have budget to do one more technology beyond uh, 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 virtual lock, what do you think this kind of technology should be? Yeah, beyond access, yeah, I would say it's monitoring. Um, and, and so like the, like the monitor we use is from a French company called Anatmo, uh, and it monitors four act it monitors four points and it just connects directly to the internet. So that's noise, uh, CO2, which can tell you if it's stuffy or if it's over occupied, uh, temperature and humidity. So if you don't have a smart thermostat, at least you know what the temperature is, um, well, and the humidity. And then you have those two other additional sensors, which bring a tremendous amount of value, both to, uh, owner protection as well as a sort of guest comfort. Phenomenal. We're just about getting into our time. And again, I want to encourage everybody to reach out to the speakers and ask them uh, directly. I also see a lot of people who want to know more about the Operto and Full House packages. So I'm sure Michael and Andrea would love to answer. But one last question to everybody. When you finally can travel and board a plane and go wherever you want, guys, where are you going to go? Let's dream together. Michael, where is your next escape when, once the borders are open? Well, we were planning to go to, uh, I was, we were planning, so there were all these uh, conferences. There was going to be the Lisbon and Barcelona and all that. And so I planned to take my whole family in March and that got canceled. Um, so right now, instead, we're doing a, a road trip around British Columbia, uh, two or three nights in each little remote, cool little town. Uh, but definitely it's going to be, it's going to be Europe. It's going to be Spain and, and, uh, and Portugal. Portugal. Love it. Andrea, what's your uh, vacation destination once the borders are finally open? I mean, Gestival, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea already got invited to my mom's Rosh Hashanah dinner. Yeah, exactly. I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, um, but side note, I've never actually traveled Canada, so this is a great time to be doing it. And I think there's a lot of Canadians in similar uh, circumstances, so I've never been to BC, so I'm really looking forward to go explore that, explore the west coast of Canada at some point. <laughs> that sounds great. Roman, finish up with something strong. Uh, well, I, since I don't have the, I didn't make the cut for your mom's Rosh Hashanah dinner, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll just, I'll plan to fly to, to Aruba where you're at right now. I can only imagine your background <laughs> is the ocean at the moment, so I, I, I think you're doing it right. I'd love, I'd love to have you. Thanks again, guys. That was a great, great session. And thank you, everybody on the line for the great questions. It's always a pleasure. Again, Michael, Andrea, Roman, thanks for sharing with us your thoughts. You can also email us at meetup at guesty.com if you have any more questions. Always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us in all the different channels. And for those who ask, the recording will be shared in just a few days. Thanks again, everybody, for your uh, insights here. That was very, very insightful. Thank, thank you, you so much for having us. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.